Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. My Bloody Valentine 2009 movie thoughts. So, when Harry, at the beginning, kills that nurse after he wakes up from his coma, I don't know exactly why he does it. I'm guessing some kind of PTSD thing. You know, I guess it might also be that he's just really mad at the utter lack of attention paid by the staff because you know when the nurse walks in she actually checks the IV before she checks to see if the patient is there. I really hope that doesn't also extend to you know surgery and such because it would really I mean they, they could lose a lot of mattresses if they start cutting before the patient is actually present. The that is actually a little bit of, I can't really find a motive in, you know, what Harry does. It's just kind of, you know, he wakes up and then he kills people. And he doesn't seem to be going after anyone in particular. Without spoiling the original, as far as I understand, the beginning of the original has, you know, it, it's revenge, you know, it's revenge for the lack of, you know, proper respect paid to the whole mining operation that got, you know, that caused the accident, and that was kind of it. You know, here, it's just a mad rampage. He's just killing left and right. He's not even, like, going in anywhere in particular. This doesn't have to be a problem for a horror movie. You don't need a motive to make a good horror movie. One of my personal all-time favorite horror movies, Halloween, there is no motive. And if you start talking about Halloween 2, I will have to smack you. The... Now, when Harry dies... Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip to the end. Because it is kind of interesting that it's Tom, you know. I thought it worked. I hadn't guessed that it was him, although I did have a feeling near the end, you know, especially when they're in the car. And Jane makes the brilliant decision. You now, she's a pure rocket scientist. She doesn't, you know, slam her foot on the brakes. You know, that might actually, you know, stop the car without risking killing both of them. No, she grabs the wheel and just yanks it. You know, that's that's just brilliant. Whether he's the killer or not, you might have just killed both of you. That's just... Anyway, we find out that it's Tom and that he's been in a mental institution for the past seven years, which might explain why he missed his father's funeral. What is... Again, the motive. I'm not sure there really is any kind of... And again, that's that's potentially interesting for a horror movie because it's kind of he could kill anyone anywhere because there's really no rhyme or reason behind it he's not going after anyone in particular there are no limits to where when and how he will strike i did also wonder slightly if you know my interpretation of it was that he had a split personality you know he developed a second personality that was Harry to cope with the shock of, you know, having been attacked by Harry, you know, in the beginning. I was a little surprised that they never asked. I Maybe I missed that line, but it didn't seem like there was a line where he, you know, confronted Axel and said, hey, you left me behind. You know, I mean, he could have tried to run over Harry or drive the car closer or something, you know. Might not have been smart, but still, when you're lying there on the ground in front of a killer and your friends were just driving away, also, the you know, Sarah and Irene didn't really seem to mind either about the whole driving away. I'm not... Anyway. It, you know, that, that was how I read it, but that's... That might really say more about my 
background and, you know, interest in psychology than the movie itself, because it doesn't actually say it's a split personality. Maybe what it is, is that he's possessed by the spirit of Harry. That isn't said outright, but it might as it could be that just as well as it could be a split personality. And that is a little interesting, you know, that it, it really does leave it up to the viewer. That's, I, this movie had m much more subtlety than a lot of the recent horror movies, especially these reimaginings. Kudos. And I guess at the end, Harry has completely taken over for Tom, you know, with, you know, also the ending. I like that he actually gets out and, you know, you have the, the he, you know, he hides in plain sight by, you know, d d putting on the mask and then just going out. And it's kind of, he could kill again, you know. I, I'm not sure they should do a sequel. Excuse me. I don't think there's, excuse me. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not sure there's anything particularly interesting to do with a sequel. With that said, I'm not ruling out possibly watching it if it does. You know, if, if it seems to be as good as this was, because this was a genuinely pretty good movie. The... The, the image of Ackles, you know approaching there at the end, smashing the light bulbs. He is genuinely scary. You know, you are, you know, really fearing that he's going to kill, you know, Sarah there. And that's, you know, as I mentioned in the review, good use of Jensen's intensity because he really does have that kind of intense presence, you know, he can scare you. The... The Irene sequence, I think it was Irene, you know, the, the nudity. As a young male, I can appreciate it, but it did seem a little ridiculous, you know, she's completely naked before she's being chased and she never puts on any kind of clothing. I mean, one thing is having sex and if she doesn't want for her, you know, sexual encounter be, to be recorded on video, why is she so okay with running out, you know, completely naked, you know, in the motel? Sure, it's nighttime, but still. I like that, you know, there are a couple of things that kind of make more sense once you've seen the entire movie. Like, I wondered how Tom didn't hear anything. You know, I was thinking, what, is he like a really heavy sleeper that he did not hear the screams? You know, clearly some screams from outside the motel itself and, you know, all the violence, did he really think that was all sex? You know, my girlfriend said, oh, but he took some sleeping pills. But then I wondered, but he shows up at the bar later. So clearly he wasn't entirely sleeping, but I, maybe he left for the bar before. But then when you've seen the entire movie and you realize he's the killer, he was, you know, killing them. That's why he didn't notice anything, you know. But it's somewhat clever because, you know, you don't necessarily pinpoint that he's the killer at that exact point. The thing about him having dug up the grave, it's a little unclear when exactly he did this and if that was like when the, you know, before the killings began he went out and found the grave and that's a bit of a, unless you theorize that Harry Harry's spirit has possessed him. How did he find that grave? If it's Harry's spirit, then maybe, you know, it, it guided him there. But if it's not, it's a little strange that he found it. I thought for a little while that, you know, once we found out that there were actually, you know, people in the town had killed him, you know, he wasn't buried alive, Harry, but 
he was killed by people from the town, I thought that maybe he was coming back to kill, or whoever was taking his place was killing for revenge, you know, to get back at the people who had killed him and buried him. But then, you know, that wasn't the case. And again, he just kind of just kills randomly. Which again, I'm I'm a little mixed on that. I but I did think there was some nice stalking in the movie and you know it worked with in spite of the you know, we, we did see him a pretty good amount of time, he remained scary. Possibly because of his superhuman strength. And, you know, when you didn't see him, it was kind of, you know, where is he? You were trying to figure out where he was going to show up from. And in spite of all the jump scares, it tended to work, you know, when he suddenly appeared from somewhere and killed someone. As far as the, you know, the subtlety goes, I did think that they kind of rammed home that Tom ran away, you know. <sighs> you know, as, as a drinking game, take a shot every single time she, Sarah, tells him, you ran away, or some variant of that sentence, you know. That was a little... And it's pretty clear it's, you know, it has that whole, he was so afraid, and that actually led him to, you know, if you're believing in the multiple personality disorder theory, then, you know, that was why. And that actually does make sense from a psychological standpoint. When, you know, the things that we are afraid of, we role play as, we imagine uh, ourselves becoming so that we can handle them, so that we can, you know, control them and understand them, because what we understand, we tend not to fear anymore. And I suppose that pretty well covers it. I really liked seeing, what's his name, Tom Atkins again. You know, I haven't seen him some, since, you know, the, the 80s movies, usually John Carpenter, that he was in, but, you know, he still got it. He's still kind of fun, and, you know, he's he's got that kind of charm to him where he's still somewhat towards, like, badassery. The line about, you know, that he's not going to save Tom a third time. Yeah, okay, I guess it's that, you know, Tom has, you know, been too much of a jerk. He's been too disrespectful or whatever. I did wonder slightly. I guess him coming back is really just, you know, he's just been released, as we find out. He's been in the mental institution, so he's just been released, and he's thinking, I have to, or maybe it's the split personality or spirit possession that drives him back so he can go back and kill people. But if, you know, it's, if, if it's not that, then maybe he really does just want to shut down the mind because he's afraid it will kill more people, you know. I thought it worked pretty well with the, you know, the, the bit where he apparently locked himself in there. You know, well, not apparently, we do see it in the flashback. He locked himself in after killing Red, and that, you know, that makes sense, you know, I was gonna make like a, you know, Harry puts him on timeout joke, but, huh, what do you know, I still managed. It, because when, when you first see the scene, you're thinking, it can't be him, you know. I was thinking, if it is him, maybe he has an ally or something, but then, 
you know, and that was also slightly unclear if he really does believe no, I, I guess he does believe that Harry is out there, or some copycat. Until, you know, except for when he's taken over by him. And that bit near the end where he's saying, Oh, look, he's there, he's behind you. You know, when he starts saying there's something behind you, you're thinking, he's the one, you know, he's got to be guilty. And, you know, it's like, there's clearly nothing behind him. And then you're like, something is behind him behind them and you know you're wondering why isn't you know Axel reacting to it at all why are they just standing there and then you realize it really is just all in his mind and it walks right past them and it steps into Tom you know and that that fits with both theories that could be the spirit you know so like a, a visual representation of the spirit entering tom because pretty much right after that you know he does start harrying up the place again or it could be that you know the like the the um, him imagining Harry there, you know, just kind of, you know, again, maybe just a visual representation of his delusion. And I, I think that covers it. So if there's anything I didn't cover here that you really want my opinion on, write down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.